Hey guys, Valencia Time Center here, and today I am very pleased to be introducing to you a brand new watch from Casio G-Shocks G Aviation Series. This is the GWA 1000-1. The watch is cockpit inspired, and it features a brand new triple G resist structure from G-Shock. The triple G resist is supposed to resist uh, forces from gravitational dropping, centrifugal gravitational force, and also vibration. Also with this watch, Casio is introducing their smart access system, which if you'll notice on the side, the watch has a crown. It's an electronic crown, and it also has a five drive motor, which we'll be able to see uh, basically with the features of the watch as we go through them. What I wanna do is show you guys how to set this watch. Uh, some people might say, hey, that's, you know, counterintuitive because these watches set themselves but not everybody is in a position to receive the signal if you do want to receive a signal and you want to try to set it up outside your window you can set this watch up to manually receive so if you were to manually receive what you do is hold down your bottom right button which they call B you hold it down for two seconds one two the second hand will rotate around to the letter R. That means it's ready to receive. When it starts to receive, the second hand will jump down here to W, which means working or receiving. I'm going to not wait for this to actually happen. Just press any button to get out of that manual receive mode. If you wanted to get the watch to automatically receive, what you do is you press B one time unscrew your crown and pull it out. Right now you'll notice that the second hand jumped around to Y. Y means yes, automatically receive. If you don't want the watch to automatically receive the signal, you can rotate your crown to N. I'm gonna leave it on Y because why not? If the watch will actually receive the signal, that's a good thing. Most of us are not in a position for the watch to receive a signal all the time. So from here, I'm going to screw the crown down. I'll show you how to do that. You line up the little red line with the red dot. You push it in, and you rotate it around until it's lined up with the white line. So from here, I want to show you guys how to set the watch if you had to manually set it. The first thing that you want to do is make sure that your watch is in the home time setting. We know that our watch is in the home time setting because at the bottom of the screen there, that little red hand is pointing to the day of the week. As long as it's pointing to the day of the week, you are in your home time setting. If it wasn't, it could be pointing at a couple of the other functions on the watch. You press your bottom left button C, and you'll see that you can rotate the hands around to world time. This is your stopwatch mode. Countdown timer. Alarm or your home time. So now that we know that we're in our home time, what you want to do, you want to pull your crown out. So in order to do that, unscrew it. It's going to kick out just like any other screw down crown. It's spring loaded. Pull it out. You'll see that the second hand rotates around to a city code. Right now it's showing NYC, New York City. For me, I'm in Los Angeles. So I'm going to run it backwards until it shows you LAX. You can run it both ways. So I'm going to run it around until it shows LAX. And then the first thing that you got to do is make sure whether or not your watch is set up for standard time or daylight savings time. In this case, this watch has an automatic setting for that. If you press your top right button A and you hold it down for two seconds, You'll see that little red hand move. Notice it went to STD. That's standard time. Hold it down again. DST, daylight savings time. Hold it down again. It'll rotate back to AT. That's automatic. That's where most of us are going to leave it. So from here, now I know that I'm in LAX. I want to set the time. I'm going to hold down the bottom left button, C, until the second hand goes to 12. Now we can set our time. 
All you do is rotate the crown. It's really, really simple. So let's say for the sake of this video that it's like 9.30. One thing to notice, if you just rotate slowly, it's going to take a while. If you rotate this fast three times, it's going to speed up. Gets better. Do it again. And it works double time. So let's set it to 10.13. So right now we've set our time to whatever time it is where you are. And now we got to move on and set the date. To set the date, you got to press the bottom left button C twice. So when we press the bottom button C twice, you're going to see that the date in that window is actually going to move a little bit to let you know that it's ready to be set. So we press it once, twice. You see it move down and up. That means your date is ready to be set. To set the date, just rotate your crown. What's great about this, it goes forward and it goes backward. So now our date is set. Today it's the 26th. We're going to press C one time. The second hand is going to rotate around and it's going to show you the month. Right now it's September. That's why it's pointing to 9. That would be October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. So we're going to shoot all the way around to September. Press it one more time. And now we're able to set our year. When the hand stop, we'll see the hour hand is showing you the tenths of the year. So it's 2010 plus 2, which is where the minute hand is. So it's 2012. This would be 2013, 2014. I'm going to run this all the way around past 9 so you see 2020, right? 2 on the hour hand and 0 on the minute hand. I'm going to run this back around, so we're on 2012. And now that you've set that, we're done. Your time is set, your date is set, the year is set. Push the crown back in, and the day is automatically going to set up because it already knows the day based off of the year. So that's how you set the time, guys. When you first get your watch, it will probably be set up already, just maybe to a different city code. In the event that it gets out of sync, that's what you want to do. Now, this watch has a very, very cool feature. It's got a thermometer, but it's all analog. And I want to show you guys how to use that. We're in the timekeeping mode. This is the only way it's going to work, is if it's in the timekeeping mode. We know that we're in timekeeping because the red hand is pointing to the day of the week. To get to your thermometer, you tap A. Right now, it's showing us a Celsius reading. We know that because the second hand is pointing at the C, the Celsius. It's pointing at the positive because it's plus zero degrees. It's over zero degrees. And in this case, the hour hand shows you the tenths. The minute hand shows you the ones position. If you don't do anything for a couple seconds, it goes back. So we're going to do it again. And I'm going to show you what this is reading. So from a Celsius position, it's reading 29 degrees Celsius, right? If from here you wanted to change it to Fahrenheit, while you're showing a, a reading, you pull your crown out like I just did, and you hold down A for two seconds. Now it's going to show us a reading in Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit reading is a little bit different. In this case, the minutes, the minute hand is showing you the tens, the second hand is showing you the one position. So this is showing 84 degrees. The hour hand shows you the hundreds. So if it was over 100 degrees, the hour hand would be pointing at the one. So 84 degrees. The good, the good thing about this, guys, you're only going to have to do this once. You don't have to do this many times. Most of us are only going to read either Fahrenheit or Celsius. It's not something where you're jumping back and forth. So don't get too hung up on this. From here, we're done. 
push your crown in. We're going to keep it set on Fahrenheit because that's what I would use. After a couple seconds, the hands are going to rotate back around and show you the regular time setting. Just like that. So that's my review, guys. I just wanted to show you some of the different features, the, the way that this watch is set, let you get an idea of the electronic crown. Right now, it's unscrewed. We're going to push it back down and lock it. I'm going to give you a couple other looks at the watch. That little logo on the back, that's the Triple G Resist Structure logo uh, to show you all of the, uh, the three points of the Triple G Resist. They've got some little instructions on the back there, which is kind of cool. Give you a look at the other side of the case. You've got this little rubber uh, shock resistor on the side. I wanted to give you guys a look at the GWA1000D. We also got this watch in stock. It's the same exact watch, but it's on the metal bracelet. It's the black IP bracelet. For this watch, I'm going to leave it wrapped up, guys. These watches are extremely special. We're only going to get one, so I can't show you any better than that. They are cosmetically a little bit different, though. If you'll notice the little red hand at the top on the D metal bracelet, it's white. Also, the red hand at the bottom on this watch on, with the metal bracelet, that's white as well. So there are those watches side by side. Slap it on my wrist to give you a quick idea of how this watch looks size-wise. It's very, very similar to the uh, GW4000 series. I have a 7-inch wrist, guys, so if you can get an idea. Very, very comfortable, very good, and the watch glows at night. I took this picture with my cell phone, of all things, in the dark, pitch black room, and it came out very well. So that's our review, guys. I hope you enjoy it, and as usual, if you have any questions, please feel free to visit us at the website that you see at the bottom of the screen. Thanks. Have a good one.